Now what we're going to do today is talk about three different vehicles, but for various reasons, we can't get at them all, so I'm mainly going to talk in front of this Scorpion. Please remember to like, subscribe or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. But what we're starting off with is the actual driver instruction chassis. Then we're going on to this one, which is Scorpion itself. And then we've got the um, Sabre, which is the Scorpion, but with the Fox turret on it. So we'll start off with the chassis. Now the chassis itself is quite unusual. We have one photo of it as a complete vehicle. Originally it was, I think the number was 93SP00, which was a very early Scorpion, probably a prototype. And um, it was then got at by a firm called Morfax Limited, a Mitchum in Surrey, and they converted it from a complete um, prototype Scorpion into a driver instruction vehicle. It's quite an interesting vehicle. It's still got that number plate, 93SP00 painted on it. So you can see that it's almost certainly the same vehicle. It's been cut down to more or less chassis height so that the instructor can show the chaps all the, the layout of the engine, the driver's compartment are all compact and beautifully sort of arranged. It's got some of the spoked wheels that are a, a hallmark of the, um, the old prototypes and it's still got a few of them left, although it's one or two have been replaced by disc ones. Other, and it's, of course, it's got the old Jaguar engine in it. But um, as I said, what I wanted to talk about is how you drive it because it's not only unusual, it applies to all the CVR series and would therefore fill the bill with any of them. Now the, the whole thing, the uh, change speed arrangements in the driver's cab and the transmission at the very front of the vehicle are actually a scaled down version, a smaller version of the, um, the type used on Chieftain for instance. Now, what you do with the Chieftain and with this thing is change gear with your feet, which is or at least one of them, which is a bit unusual. Instead of a clutch pedal, which it doesn't need, because it's got a centrifugal clutch built into the system anyway, but in place of the clutch pedal is a pedal which changes gear. It's actually got seven speeds, all very close together, as you'd imagine, so it can accelerate very rapidly, one gear after another. It's what is known, I think in the States more than anything else, as a hot shift type gear change. It can be done very quickly. It can be done without the aid of a conventional clutch because it's working through this centrifugal one. And he can, using a switch for forward and reverse, he can also get seven speeds backwards. If he wants seven speeds backwards, then you are. Now it drives through this TN15X transmission, which is right at the front. And it's a mixture of two things. It's the actual change speed arrangements, which are needed, and the real gearbox, in fact, for the vehicle, and the cross drive to the sprockets. And therefore the steering and everything else is all mixed in there. So inside this little box, you've got what's known as a combination um, transmission, if you like. It's quite small, it really would surprise you how much they've got in it, but it's the same principle as used on the, um, the Chieftain tank. So it means that any driver who's been in a Chieftain knows the ropes and can convert to a Scorpion type vehicle with a fair amount of ease. So what we want to talk about now is the Scorpion itself. Now I know we've done Scorpion before, but um, strictly speaking, the Scorpion you saw there was a prototype. You can tell at once just by looking at the wheels. The wheels on the prototypes are all spoked. They're made of aluminium, same as any other of these smaller vehicles, but um, they're not discs 
and discs came in really with the production vehicles. So Scorpions like this one have five disc wheels on each side, torsion bar suspended. Now, this Scorpion's quite unusual. It is a production version, it's been in serve, but it still has the old engine under the bonnet. And you can tell that by looking at the side. It hasn't got the air intakes that you'd see with a, um, a vehicle that had been converted to um, the diesel engine. It's a three-man vehicle. The driver sits there and two crew members in the turret. And we'll come to that in a minute. It's built of an aluminium alloy. It's the first British armoured vehicle to be built of, uh, with aluminium in it. It means that roughly you you could say that, um, say about three times the thickness of steel armour for the same protection. But of course the great thing is the thicker armour gives some more rigidity to the thing. So you don't need all those internal supports that you normally get on a steel armoured vehicle. So from that point of view, they were quite progressive in their day. And now we come to the turret. Now that turret is, mounts a 76 millimetre gun, which is really a bit of a lightweight version of the gun in Saladin in the armoured car. But it's the same calibre, it's basically the same gun. The only trouble is that a rumour went around sometime that it was actually creating fumes in the turret. And up at ATDU on the camp here, they tested one by firing a whole ring around, you know, one after the other range of ammunition from it. And they found, in truth, it did build up quite a, a header of fumes in the turret. And about, they said, about as lethal as having a cigarette. And because of that, because it was creating a possibly dangerous level of fumes, they did away with it completely. They did away with the 76 millimetre gun and the turret. What became of it after that, I'll show you shortly. But that's one of the reasons. The Scorpion vanished from the complete um, setup of CVR vehicles at that time. You could, of course, get air conditioning for the turret, which would sort all that out in no time at all. But air conditioning was only normally supplied um, to a, a customer from the Middle East who wanted a vehicle that was fume free and needed that air conditioning just for the sake of the crew inside the vehicle. And you could, you, in fact, you could get it with all vehicles, but um, they didn't have it in Britain. It was a bit too unnecessary and expensive. Who wants all that rubbish? So they did away with it and of course regretted it afterwards. The other thing actually, while we're on the subject talking about that, is that the these vehicles have no power traverse in them. The traverse of the turret is done by hand. And although that doesn't really affect the vehicle that much, so it's, it's better than having a power traverse, but you can live without it. And that's what they decided. It would cost more to add that in. So they decided to run the vehicle without. And that also is a slight handicap for a vehicle that was meant to go into combat that it didn't have the, um, the power to turn its own turret. It had to be wound around when you wanted it to. So that's um, the other fa feature, which uh, is very typical of Scorpion. And they're all done to save money as much as anything else. Money does play a very large part in all these vehicles when they're being designed. There are people looking over the shoulder of the designer saying, oh, we don't need that, we'll manage without that and purely to um, reduce the cost of the thing. As I say, the one we've seen so far is a prototype. This is a production one, but you can tell from the side that it's still got the Jaguar engine in it, the old straight six Jag engine, because it hasn't got the air intake, which was added when the Cummins diesel became. So there we are, but that Scorpion will go on next and look at the Sabre, which is Scorpion, but fitted with a different turret. Now we've come into the Afghan exhibition, and this, believe it or not, is actually Sabre. It's pretending to be a scimitar, 
but uh, they're in, in a quick glance they look much the same anyway but in fact it's a sabre and that is to say a scorpion hull with a fox turret on now we've already been through this once but let's just recap on it what had happened with scorpion was that they tested it by massive firing barrages and that sort of thing and they decided that scorpion did give off enough fumes to be a little bit dangerous to people in the turret. So what they did, is, well, they couldn't do any other way really, they completely got rid of Scorpion turrets on vehicles. And in fact, one or two other places, Canada was one, uh, Australia another, where they'd actually used the Scorpion turret on a vehicle of their own, they did away with that completely as well. So what they did was to take the Scorpion hull which was still perfectly serviceable, and fit it with the turret of a Fox armoured car. It meant that the, the turret was now slightly lower, but you won't be able to tell by looking at it, but it, it is slightly lower. And they also found that it did cramp the style of the crew a bit. In fact, it pressed down on them a bit too much, so they put domed hatches on so they could move their heads, which helps a bit. So fitting the Fox turret was designed to fit a smaller turret ring, and that caused problems in matching it up with Scorpion. They had to make new turret rings and all this sort of thing. And it's fitted with this 30 mil Raden cannon. Now it's a semi-automatic gun. You load the Raden with three rounds in a clip, and you can either fire them individually or you can actually fire, on automatic fire, bursts of three or six, as you require. And with an APDS round, which is armour-piercing, discarding sabo, they could actually use the gun against existing armour, which was their main... Aim. What they really wanted was a, a gun that would take out APCs and things like that. But they found that with the... Um, 30 mil, the rather than firing APDS, they could actually start to make holes in main battle tanks as long as you approach them from the back or, or the side. And um, they, they got quite a good performing vehicle out of it with a very, very good anti tank capability. The trouble is that the turret didn't really comfortably fit the, um, the Scorpion hull because they were two turret rings of different sizes and they tried to overcome it but they couldn't in the end and uh, they decided to drop Sabre with it of course, the, all the Scorpion hulls they, one was sent here though as you see it's now been dressed up to look like a scimitar but um, really it's, it's a Sabre quite an unusual vehicle but that's how Sabre was done and that's what Sabre was a modified scorpion.